Good morning, folks. Uh, I'm excited to be here today to talk about Google's collaborations with the Open Power Foundation and the Open Compute Project. Um, but before I get into all of that, I'd like to introduce myself a little bit. My name is Maura Mahani. I recently joined the Board of Directors for the Open Power Foundation. Uh, but my main role is to be a part of the platforms team at Google. And at Google, Platforms Organization is responsible for developing the compute, storage, and networking technology that underpins the products that many of you are familiar with. So Maps, Search, YouTube, Cloud, Gmail, and many, many more. And for, for us, platforms, success looks like delivering on the equation that we describe as performance per TCO dollar. So TCO is total cost of ownership. And we're successful when year over year we deliver better performance and also when we drive down costs. So a lot has changed at Google since I joined nine years ago. And we've enjoyed tremendous growth. Some examples are search, when I started, was seeing, could find under one trillion web addresses. Today, that's up to 60 trillion web addresses. Recently, our CEO, Sundar, announced that Gmail has over one billion users. That's one billion active users more than double the number of users we had in 2012. And YouTube, when I joined, saw seven hours of video upload per minute. Now YouTube sees over 400 hours of video upload per minute. So the demand on compute for our team is growing, and it's been relentless. We don't see it abating anytime soon. So on the one hand, demand is growing, but on the other hand, we find that compute technology development is at a crossroads. I think John Zanus alluded to headlines and articles that many of you have read, may have read recently. So The Economist, The New York Times, Nature Magazines, Nature Magazine, all of those talk about the end of Moore's Law or the imminent end of Moore's Law or the death of Moore's Law. But I think this chart on the right expresses for us, this is a chart that was generated by folks at Stanford, expresses what that means for us at Google. So we see that the gains, the energy efficiency gains that you used to get from making transistors smaller, is declining. And an effect of that is that CPU clock speed is leveling off or plateauing. And we also recognize that the cost of making transistors smaller is increasing. And all of this overhead makes it more challenging for us to deliver on that equation of performance per TCO dollar. So we know that we need to have a different approach and that is why Google is backing the vision that underpins the Open Power Foundation. Next. So the vision is to build scale-out server systems, taking advantage of the amazing I.O. subsystem that the Open Power architecture delivers. Now, Google's been part of the Open Power Foundation since the very beginning. We were one of the founding members in 2013. And at that time, our own Gordon McKean, who is a director in platforms, was the original chair. Now, in 2014, Google demoed a Power8 prototype server for use by developers at Google. And recently, and continuing on the theme of openness, our senior vice president, Urs Halsley, announced at the Open Compute Project Summit that Google's been building servers around the 48-volt to point-of-load architecture 
that we've been deploying those servers for many years. Now, the reason that Google is building on 48 volt instead of the typical 12 volts that servers usually use is that we see a 30% uh, improvement in power distribution losses. So the power distribution losses with 48 volt, 30% less than you get with 12 volt. At the Open Compute Project Summit, Google also announced that with Facebook, we're co-developing an open rack project. And that open rack is built on that 48 volt architecture. So you might be wondering, what has Google been doing with Power8 since we demoed that prototype? And we've been doing a lot. I'm excited to say that we've successfully enabled a number of Google apps on the Power Server. Uh, especially, we've ported our infrastructure onto the Power architecture. And most importantly, what that means is that our tool chains support Power so that for our Google software developers, uh, enabling Power for their software application is simply a matter of modifying a flag in a config file and off they go. So where are we going next with Power? So building on the success that we've had with making Power work for Google developers and Google software engineers, I'm thrilled to announce today that with Rackspace, we're co-developing a Power 9 server platform. And if it's accepted, we will make that server design available to the Open Compute project. So... <laughs> So I'd like to introduce Zeus. Uh, this is a dual socket Power 9 server. It will have 32 DDR4 DIMM sockets. And I think the thing that we're most excited about is that blazing fast wide I.O. subsystem that's built on best-in-class PCIe Gen 4, much of which can also be used as CAPI. This product also has NVLink interfaces and an accelerator uh, uh, I.O. subsystem. So, of course, the server design uh, is built on 48 volt to point of load power architecture, and we will design it such that it is compatible with the open rack design that we're co-developing with Facebook. So I'd like to leave you with some parting thoughts. First of all, we're thrilled to be collaborating with Rackspace. We're very excited to be working with the Open Compute Project and the Open Power Foundation communities to innovate on the Power9 server platform, and especially to find new ways to satisfy the diverse needs of our customers. And finally, we're really excited to see where this platform will take us. Thank you.